Hello, welcome to a GibbsCAM demonstration from Midwest Cam Solutions. This demonstration is for Volume Mill 3D. This is a aircraft part. It has uh, some five axis features on it. And we're going to use Volume Mill to rough this part. Um, operation 1 is the first Volume Mill toolpath that has taken a good portion of the stock out. With Volume Mill, we always want to take big pieces out and remove the stock with big Z chunks and then you can come back and do material only and whittle the part down and get it more to, uh, to fit a shape. Volume mill has a swirling type tool path where it's side milling and it has a high feed to reposition and a cut feed. In the process we tell it the reposition clearance which is usually ten thousands. It stays close to the floor, repositions at a high feed rate, and helix is back down for the cut. With this particular part we're running 12,000 RPM at 250 inches a minute. We're using a 0.2 cut width, about a 40 percent cut width, and we're side milling only. If it couldn't side mill to get in then it would do a slot and you can have its own program feed for slotting feed rates which is normally about 75 percent. There's no slotting in this part, so doesn't don't worry about that. And we're leaving a little stock for the finished cuts. Um, and when you when you when you process it, it calculates it very quickly and develops a tool path. If wrapper traverse is faster than feeding, it'll switch and transverse back and forth on its own. This is the first roughing depth cut operation where it's all side milling. And the reason why I did this in a few different ops is because I wanted to control my depth steps. And for this op I went down to the top of just the ribs. And the third op is going from the top with two cuts down to the bottom. And the part is pre-machined with holes where these posts are where it's uh, being screwed down to a jig plate fixture to hold the part. So we'll let this render through here and we can watch the volume mill tool paths. And um, at any time when you're roughing and you want a smaller tool or a tool to only get where the other tools couldn't, uh, material only can be applied. And the system knows the material conditions at each operation as it's being built. Because operation 4 coming up here is a material only tool path where it's only going to cut where it needs to with smaller Z steps. Because operation 4 now which has started is a smaller tool. Op 1 was a half inch, op 2 is a 3 8 Let's look at operation 4. I'll double click operation 4 brings the process over quarter inch end mill we're running a uh, 3 8 end mill we're running the same speeds and leaving stock but making smaller Z steps. You also can control a ridge height and scallop with a bull nose or a ball end mill. But it determines where the stock is based on the prior ops. It knows the material condition. And in the process you simply check material only and it knows to cut where stock is, where that tool uh, is able to cut. And we're just scalloping down and it's going to do side milling. So it's going to get all the stock out and remove it so it's uh, more uniform in the ridges. And we have little narrows here. It's going to tricordal and volume mill out that, that tool path. Volume mill is the, 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 the most advanced technology in removing material. Uh, never shocking the tool. It always has the same thickness of chip. It adapts the feed to each turn. Because in volume mill, my, my milling feed right here is for a straightaway cut. And whenever it does an inside turn, it will slow down and outside turns will speed up. Um, the rest of the part here is machined as well with five axes Gibbs cam and advanced 3D uh, surface machining. Um, every part that goes out in your shop 
could have a volume mill toolpath on it. Your tools will last 40 to 10 times percent, uh, 10 times longer, 4 to 10 times longer, and the cut time can be reduced from 40 to 200 percent, depending on the part. The more the area, the more volume, the more time savings. Parts don't have to be clamped down as hard. There's not as much pressure put on it. And flatness issues and problems seem to go away with volume mill. The heat goes out in the chip. With steel, we generally run uh, 6 to 10 times surface foot with a 7 to 10 percent side cut. And with softer alloys, we're running about a 40 percent cut width. And um, uh, pretty much almost as fast as you can go with the smaller tools. And uh, uh, pretty heavy chip loads as well. Um, considering based on standard chip loads. Volume mill can work in the 2D or 3D environment. It can work with geometry in leverage air walls or work from a solid model. It also has the ability to avoid fixtures, constraint uh, solid models with fixtures so we don't hit fixtures. You can tell it to clear it by a small amount. There is a fixture clearance um, section in your process where you can tell how far to clear your, your fixture, which is a nice thing to not have to detail any constraints. Volume mill is easy to use, it's easy to learn, um, requires almost no training if you're a Gibbscam user. It doesn't take more a day to get familiar with the simple process dialog and to get making parts. Give us a call if you'd like to put volume mill to the test and see if it can help you. Bye now and have a great day. Thank you.